Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Anju Kagar and here I'm back again with another episode on mycobacteria. So my previous lectures I've spoken to you about cultivable mycobacteria and today we are going to concentrate on the non-cultivable mycobacterium lepra. Non-cultivable means it does not grow in artificial media. So, let us look at Mycobacterium leprae, the organism which causes leprosy. This was discovered by Hansen in 1873. It is a chronic infectious disease, granulomatous in nature, which affects the peripheral nerves and the mucosa of the upper respiratory tract. The disease as you all know exists since a long time. In fact, in the middle ages patients were ostracized and there used to be many leper colonies where they were vanquished to. And this was done because the disease causes a lot of physical disfigurement. In fact, in the 19th century Leprosy was believed to be a hereditary ailment. In a country like India, and there, there are still, still almost more than 10,000 cases of leprosy being reported per year. And these patients are also stigmatized and ostracized by society. The states in India where it is commonly found, most commonly in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar and then in Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Orissa and West Bengal. These are the states which lead in the number of detectable cases of leprosy. How is this disease transmitted? It is transmitted through nasal secretions. Entry is believed to be through the respiratory tract or through broken skin. The main reservoir of this disease is humans and it is also believed that the nine banded armadillo also harbors the bacillus without really suffering from the disease. The risk group in leprosy right from children to older people and people living in endemic areas, in poor conditions and especially if they are immunocompromised. Mycobacterium leprae has a special predilection for superficial skin, the ears, nasal mucosa and peripheral nerves. It is believed that this happens because that part of the body is cooler than the rest of the body. In later stages, eventually this bacillus multiplies and can affect the internal organs which would involve the testes, the eyes, bones, lungs and liver. How is leprosy classified? The ridley dow joplin classification has been used for years and this has the mainstay of this diagnosis has been the histology. So according to the ridley joplin classification, patients of leprosy can be divided into two large groups 
tuberculoid leprosy which is at one spectrum. These patients have few bacilli and have a good cell mediated immunity. On the other end of the spectrum, we have lepromatous leprosy cases where there are many organisms and there is immunosuppression. Between these, you have the borderline tuberculoid, the borderline and the borderline lepros lepromatous cases. Now, this classification as I mentioned earlier was basically done on the basis of histology and determining an individual's cell mediated immunity and therefore required infrastructure. The WHO classification is a more field friendly classification which means that it is possible to diagnose cases even in the remotest area and this depends on counting the number of skin lesions based on which the disease is divided into posibacillary or multibacillary. In posibacillary leprosy, a patient has 5 or less lesions, whereas in multibacillary lesions, there are more than 5. Now, this method helps in determining the kind of treatment that a patient gets. To demonstrate this, let me discuss a few case studies with you. We will start with the first case study. A 25 year old male presented to the OPD with a non healing ulcer under his right big toe, quite similar to the picture you see in this frame. Now, this ulcer developed following a minor injury which occurred 3 to 4 months back. The patient had been going to his local GP, but did not get any respite and the ulcer was not healing. On further questioning, the patient reported that prior to developing the injury, he had had tingling, tingling numbness in his right hand and right foot. Over the months, he also found that very often his footwear would slip off and he could not feel the heat of hot objects. So, often when drinking a hot cup of tea, he found that he had developed burns on his hand. So, here you have a 25 year old male patient who has who is given a past history of tingling numbness and loss of sensation in the right hand and foot and a non healing ulcer. On examination, the patient had hypopigmented patches on his legs, upper part of the arms and torso and these patches were anesthetic. In addition, on the knee, he had annular reddish plaques with satellite lesions. His posterior tibial nerve as well as ulna nerve were thickened and he had the beginnings of a claw hand. The clinician suspected that the patient had borderline tuberculoid leprosy and since he had more than 5 lesions, he was labeled as multi bacillary. Since the patient had come to a medical college and facilities were available, a slit skin smear was taken from the outer edge of the eyebrow and from one of the hypopigmented 
patches. Now, how is this slit skin smear taken? So, you usually pinch the skin so as to reduce the bleeding, after which, of course, you have cleaned the site with spirit before you proceed. And then, with a sharp scalpel, you make a nick in the skin and you have to go little deeper and scrape the inside of the skin. Now, this whatever material is taken out is then spread on a slide, allowed to air dry and then sent to the laboratory. The smear in this patient's case, smears were prepared and they were stained with ZN modified ZN stain. The modification here is that instead of using 20 percent sulfuric acid, we use 5 percent sulfuric acid because Mycobacterium leprae is less acid fast than Mycobacterium tuberculosis. A biopsy was also taken from the hypopigmented patch and it revealed a well formed granuloma with epithelioid cells and lymphocytes. No acid fast bacilli were visible. All these findings confirm that the patient was suffering from borderline tuberculoid leprosy. Appropriate multi drug therapy consisting of rifampicin and clofazamine once a month under supervision, as well as dapsone 100 milligram daily and clofazamine 50 milligram daily unsupervised was given for a period of 12 months. The patient was cautioned to be careful about touching hot objects and to wear covered footwear so as not to cause any further injury on his feet. Now, we come to another case study. Sahil, a 50 year old beggar presented with bilateral tingling numbness both in his hands and feet, a glove and stocking kind of tingling numbness. When he presented, he had typical leonine facies as is seen in the right side picture of this frame. This leonine facies is a typical feature of lepromatous leprosy. In addition, he had loss of eyebrows as you can see in the left side picture and there was thickening of the ear lobes and facial skin. Slit, slam, slit smears collected from the ear and eyebrows showed many AFP and a biopsy from the ear lobe did not show any granuloma, but plenty of foamy macrophages filled with cigar shaped bundles of acid fast bacilli. The stain used for the biopsy was a fight Farako stain and a typical picture of this is seen in the photograph in this slide. Dia diagnosis of lepromatous leprosy was started and multi drug treatment for multi bacillary leprosy was given to the patient for a period of 12 months, after which he responded. This is a picture of how a patient appears after treatment. So, let us look at the laboratory diagnosis of leprosy. So, smears like I told you, slit skin smears are made or you can collect nasal secretions or a nasal scraping or you can again take a slit skin from 
a hypopigmented lesion. Now earlier these smears were prepared from six different areas which included the buttocks, the chin, the cheek, the forehead and ears and multiple slides were made. Now this has been reduced to only the eyebrow and the lesion and again multiple smears are prepared. Staining is done with modified ZN stain using yes you guessed right 5 percent sulfuric acid. Again you look for acid fast bun bacilli in parallel bundles and these cells are also referred to as workout cells or lepra cells and these can be seen in the photograph on this slide. So, the bacteriological index is calculated by adding up the score of all the smears and dividing by the number of smears seen. You can also do a morphological index. Here you do a percentage of uniformly stained bacilli out of the total number of bacteria in a tissue smear. This is useful in assessing prognosis and response to treatment. However, with the new WHO classification, these tests are not used unless you are faced with a patient who is not responding well to therapy. Okay, to complete the picture, laboratory diagnosis, we can also do a biopsy and as I mentioned early, early, earlier, we do the fight for stain, which is also a kind of acid fast stain in which we will look for foamy histiocytes containing acid fast bacilli. Cultivation of these bacteria in artificial media is not possible, but the animals in which it can be grown are first of all the foot pad of the mouse. In the upper right hand picture, you can see the foot pad of a mouse which has been inoculated and there is a granuloma formation. Then the second picture shows you a nine banded armadillo and you can also grow this in the slender loris. Mice and slender loris are available in India. The nine banded armadillo is mainly found in South America and it does not breed well in captivity. Monkeys and chimpanzees can also be used. Now when you want to inoculate the foot pad of the mouse, we usually take tissue from a patient of lepromatous leprosy and grind it before inoculating it in the foot pad. The lepromatous granuloma appears after 6 months and this inoculation is usually done to confirm a dubious diagnosis. In cases where there is drug resistance and to evaluate antimicrobial activity of newer drugs. The Lepromin test. This is actually an intradermal delayed hypersensitivity reaction in which we use the Dharmendra antigen or the Mitsuda antigen and it is usually done to classify the stage of leprosy. There are two types of reaction which a patient presents with. The first is the Fernandez reaction which appears about 24 to 48 hours after injection. The patient will have erythema and induration of 10 to 30 millimeters diameter and it may be followed by a Mitsuda reaction where the, there will be an erythematous nodular lesion 
3 to 5 millimeters in size, which appears 3 to 5 weeks later. In tuberculoid leprosy, you get a positive delayed reaction and in lepromatous leprosy, there is no reaction. This test is not a diagnostic test and is used mainly to classify leprosy, to determine the prognosis, to see if the patient is converting from lepromatous to tuberculoid and it does not indicate prior contact. Serological tests have not been very helpful in the diagnosis of lepromatous in the diagnosis of leprosy. There is an antibody test. This test demonstrates antibodies against the phenolic glycolipid 1. It is a latex agglutination test. High titers are seen in untreated lepromatous leprosy, whereas low titers are seen in tuberculoid leprosy. Titers decrease after treatment and it may be used for the diagnosis of borderline cases and for follow up of patients. However, as I mentioned, this test is not used routinely. So, you will be wondering how I am talking about antibodies here. Leprosy being an intracellular organism mainly is controlled by cell mediated immunity. However, in lepromatous leprosy, antibodies to this organism are seen in larger amounts than in tuberculoid leprosy. Whereas, cell mediated immunity is lower in lepromatous leprosy and higher in tuberculoid leprosy. Now, let us look at some of the complications or sequelae of lepromatous leprosy. Now, these usually occur in patients who have not taken treatment. There can be necrosis of the bony cartilage and the bones of the nose leading to saddle nose formation. When the posterior tibial and median nerves are involved and there is anesthesia in the limbs trophic ulcers can develop in the anesthetic areas and the patient can land up with infection as you can see in the upper picture and osteomyelitis sometimes leading to loss of digits as is seen in the lower picture. If there is involvement of the eye usually the patient presents with photosensitivity. There will be reduced vision and on examination, you would see retinal scarring and uveitis. The patient can also get glaucoma and this can also lead to blindness. If there is laryngitis, there will be hoarseness of voice testicular atrophy can lead to sterility and in some patients they may also land up with a terminal amyloid disease. Ulnar nerve involvement can lead to claw hand formation. Now, I move on to another aspect of leprosy and these are the immune reactions seen in patients with leprosy. These are usually acute episodes which are an expression of immunological instability and they are a major cause of tissue injury and morbidity. 
there are four types the lepra reaction erythema nodosum leprosum lucio phenomenon and sporotrichoid pattern the lepra reaction is also called the joffling type 1 reaction and is seen in the first 6 months of therapy these patients develop erythema and swelling with pain and tenderness and they may show a shift from borderline to tuberculoid state in which case we say it is an upgrading reaction. Uncommonly there may be a shift from borderline to lepromatous in which case we call it a downgrading reaction. This type of reaction can occur in pregnant women and untreated patients too. Erythema nodosum leprosum is seen in about 25 to 70 percent of lepromatous cases, very rarely in borderline lepromatous leprosy and this is a result of antigen antibody complexes which occur after treatment. It is a type 3 hypersensitivity arthritis type of vasculitis. There are crops of painful red nodules especially on the extremities. Sometimes these can become necrotizing and often associated with severe constitutional symptoms. Treatment of leprosy from being only dapsone therapy has now changed to multi drug therapy. In posse bacillary leprosy we give a 6 month treatment which is daily unsupervised 100 milligram dapsone and supervised monthly rifampicin 600 milligram once a month. In multi bacillary leprosy treatment is for one year. Here again there is daily unsupervised administration of 100 milligram of dapsone and 50 milligram of clofazamine therapy and monthly supervised administration of rifampin 600 milligram and clofazamine 300 milligram. This is monthly and supervised. So, these are available in blister packs so that the patient does not forget to take his medication. At the end of one month the patient comes back with the blister pack and he is given the tablet of rifampicin and clofazamine or rifampicin alone and then given his blister pack to take back for unsupervised therapy. There is no prophylaxis or vaccine available. There are many vaccine candidates as we call them. In 1928 BCG was used to prevent leprosy. In 1980 Indian Council, in 1980 ICRC, ICRC in Mumbai developed a vaccine. This was a cultivable leprosy derived mycobacterium, but it did not take off. In 1998, there was a leprosy vaccine developed and approved by National Institute of Immunology. However, that vaccine is also not being used. And in 2006, two specific antigens, MLO405 and ML2335, which are useful for antibody detection and possible candidates for vaccine are being studied, but 
so far we do not have any vaccine available. So, to conclude I thought it would be useful to show you this slide of the diagnosis of leprosy. So, in the top columns we look at the WHO classification of possible bacillary and multi bacillary leprosy. The bacteriological index in the case of possible bacillary cases would be in polar tuberculoid that is TT cases 0. In case of borderline tuberculoid it would be 0 to 1 plus. In borderline multi bacillary the, the bacteriological index would be 1 to 3 plus and in borderline lepromatous it would be 3 to 5 plus and in the case of lepromatous leprosy or polar lepromatous the bacteriological index could be 5 to 6 plus. The skin lesions will increase from posse bacillary to multi bacillary as will the nerve involvement. Posse bacillary or pol polar tuberculoid leprosy is usually stable as is lepromatous leprosy. So, both ends are quite stable and the in between BT, BB and BL are unstable and patient can slip from one to another. Of course, the bottom part of the slide shows you how we do the calculation for the number of bacilli present in a smear. So, with this I conclude my lecture on leprosy. Thank you.